Okay, for my next integrated circuit audio amplifier test and review is one of the oldest ICs, or I should say IC audio amplifier, that is actually still in production. These were one of the ICs in my other mouser video I think I put up last week. Just bought them brand new. And this chip dates back to the 70s. So we'll take a look at it and uh, see how good it is. But first, I wanted to find out how old these actually are. Well, I know they come from back in the probably mid-70s. I was looking in the Radio Shack catalogs online. And this is the 1975 catalog. And their catalogs came out... Uh, probably in August of the previous year so this would this catalog would have come out in 1974 so it had to have been out then and here it is and uh, two bucks even back then it wasn't that cheap but these other ones were even more this TAA 300 is from the late 60s even very old in the metal can type case but anyway there it is and uh, so we know it came out at least then however I was looking around and I found this applications data sheet um, application note 69 December 1972 So we know it came out at least back in 1972. I kind of wonder if Bob Weidler, you know, he's the genius behind the analog ICs. I mean, he, he was like a pioneer back in the 60s working with Fairchild semiconductors. And he moved on to national semiconductors pretty much put both of those companies on the map just crazy innovations guy was kind of uh, eccentric you know these uh, geniuses extreme intelligent type people in their fields they usually are quite eccentric but he was uh, really eccentric and he just a genius what he did with the uh, analog IC business. He created things that other companies couldn't figure out for many years. And, you know, he just put those companies on the map. But the, what happened, he, he just up and uh, quit. He retired in December of 1970. So I don't know if the LM380 was... Uh, one of the chips that he produced or you know he had a, a hand in uh, creating probably some of the blocks you know the building blocks of the chip itself like the voltage references and things that are used inside these ICs maybe his uh, designs were part of that I don't know but uh, a few years later he came back as a consultant and about a, I don't know, a month or two ago, EEV blog made a little a video about him. It's one where he's standing there with his middle finger up. <laughs> Just a kind of funny, eccentric guy. I mean, he's been dead now for 20-some years. I think he died in 91 or something like that. But anyhow, I um, want to move on. But before I do... Mm, look at this. Look familiar? This is the uh, my calculator from 1977 catalog. And again, it came out the previous year. Radio Shack's date code. This last digit is usually the year of the decade. And that's 6, so this was 1976. Hmm. Okay, let's head over to the bench and take a look at this LM380. 
Okay, set up on the breadboard here, right in this area. This is not part of it. This is the chip from the other video. While I'm thinking of it, the LM380 comes in two different flavors. Here you get the 14-pin uh, dual inline and the 8-pin dual inline package. The 14-pin has the center three pins on each side, which are brought out for heat sinking. And this chip doesn't have that. So, you know, it's the same IC as inside of it. It's just that the smaller chip cannot dissipate as much power. So you want to keep that in mind if you're going to use this chip. Uh, go ahead and give you some uh, sample music here. sounds pretty good. I don't hear any problems with it. Go on and do the power test now. Power test time. Like usual, I'm using a 1 kilohertz sine wave from the audio player. Non-inductive 8 ohm load on the output. And for the power supply voltage, I'm using 12 volts because the LM380 is designed for higher voltages. So instead of 6 or 9 volts, we'll test it with 12 volts, measured right at the pins. And because the, the volume control steps are kind of coarse on this player, I put a potentiometer there so I can adjust the volume and, uh, well, the signal level really, and that way I can get a tighter adjustment on the scope here at the point of clipping. Okay, so I'll turn on the audio player, and we are clipping, so I'll tune that out. I am using the FFT spectrum analyzer function on the scope. That's the blue line. So it's kind of a amplitude versus frequency, and it's going to show all the harmonics. So when it's clipping, there's a lot of harmonics. And as you can see, right here is a bunch of harmonics. This is our fundamental 1 kilohertz tone over here on the left. And these are all harmonics. And you can see the tops and bottoms of the waveform is clipping. So I'm going to have to adjust that down the other way. See, when I get rid of the clipping, all the harmonics are gone. And... I want to find that point right where clipping goes away, right about there. And that's uh, 2.8 volts. And uh, where's my little calculator at? I always don't have my calculator. I want to use my Radio Shack Vintage VFD calculator. Okay, 2.8, square that, divide that by the load, and we're coming in about 1 watt, 0.98, 980 milliwatts, and we'll just say it's a watt. Well, that is a little bit weak for 12 volts. 12 volt supply, 8 ohm load, I would expect to get quite a bit more, probably close to... Oh, 1.75 or, you know, maybe just scraping 2 watts. So what is the problem there? I need to find out what is going on. Well, I swapped out chips and did a little checking here. And pretty much the same thing. About 1 watt. It might just be that the chip, you know, being as old as, old as it is, it's not optimized. I, the output swing is not optimized like a lot of the newer chips. So you're not going to get as much power out from this chip that you do from the newer ICs. 
then I guess I'll wrap it up there. The LM380 Vintage Audio IC. Thanks for watching.